Remember those grab bags you used to get as a kid? Maybe in a drugstore, toy store, or the county fair? It was just a simple paper sack, but inside were hidden all kinds of little treasures, and collectively they were worth an awful lot more than the cost of the grab bag by itself. But the problem was, you never knew what you were going to get until you bought it and opened it. Well, this writing tip is a lot like that. It's a grab bag for novelists. I've brought together a collection of tips, tricks, and techniques that you can really apply to your novel immediately. But you don't know what you get until you look inside, so let's say we open this grab bag and see what we've got. First item, novels aren't stories. A novel can be extremely freeform. Some are simply narratives about a fictional experience. Others are a collection of several stories that may or may not be intertwined. For example, Jerzy Kaczynski, the author of Being There, he wrote another novel called Steps, and it contains a series of story fragments. Sometimes you get the middle of a story, but no beginning or end. Sometimes just the end, and sometimes just the middle. Each fragment is wholly involving, which leaves you wanting to know the rest of the tale, but they are not to be found. In fact, there is not that I could find any connection among the stories, nor any reason that they are in a particular order. And yet, they're so passionately told that it was one of the best reads I've ever enjoyed. The point is, don't feel confined to tell a single story straight through, beginning to end. Rather than thinking of writing a novel, think about writing a book. Consider that a book can be exclusively poetry, or as Anne Rice often does, you can use poetry to introduce chapters or sections, or to enhance a moment in a story. You can take time to pontificate on your favorite subject if you like. Unlike screenplays, which must continue to move, you can stop the story and diverge into anything you like, as long as you hold on to your reader's interest. For example, in the Stephen King novel The Tommyknockers, he meanders around a party, allows a character to go on and on and on about the perils of nuclear power. Now, nuclear power has nothing to do with the story, and the conversation does not affect nor advance anything. King just wanted to say that, and did so in an interesting diatribe. So f feel free to break any form you've ever heard that must be followed. The most free of all written media is the novel, the book, and you can literally do whatever you want. Next item in our grab bag, get into your characters' heads. One of the most powerful opportunities of the novel format is the ability to describe what a character is thinking. In movies, or stage plays with exceptions, you must show what the character is thinking through action and or dialogue, but in a novel you can just come out and say it. For example, in a movie you might say, John walks slowly to the window and looks out at the park bench where he last saw Sally. His eyes fill with tears. He bows his head and slowly closes the blinds. But in a novel you might write, John walked slowly to the window, letting his gaze drift toward the park bench where he last saw Sally. Why did I let her go, he thought. I wanted so much to ask her to stay. Saddened, he reflected on happier times with her, days of more contentment than he ever imagined he could feel. In the previous paragraph, well, there's two forms of expressing a character's thoughts. One is the direct quote of the thought, as if it were dialogue spoken internally to oneself. The other is a summary and paraphrase of what was going on in the character's head. Now, most novels are greatly enhanced by stepping away from a purely objective narrative perspective and drawing the reader into the minds of the characters themselves. What else is in our grab bag? Keep a daily log of tidbits. One of the biggest differences between a pedestrian novel and a riveting one are the clever little quips concepts, snippets of dialogue, and fresh metaphors. But coming up with this material on the fly while you're writing is a difficult chore, sometimes next to impossible. Fortunately, you can overcome this problem simply by keeping a daily log of interesting tidbits. Each and every day, many intriguing moments cross our paths. Some are notions we come up with on our own, others we simply observe. Since a novel takes a considerable amount of time to write, you're bound to encounter a whole grab bag of tidbits by the time you finish your first draft. Then for the second draft, you can refer to all that material that you've saved and drop it in whenever you need to liven up the narrative. You may find that it makes some characters more charismatic or gives others who have remained largely silent something to say. You may discover an opportunity for a subplot, a thematic discourse, 
or the opportunity to get on your soapbox and pontificate. What I do is to keep the log at the very bottom of the document of my current novel itself. That way, since the novel is almost always open on my computer, anything that comes along gets appended to the end before it fades from memory. And also, this allows me to work some of the material into the first draft of the novel even while I'm writing it. For example, here are a few tidbits at the bottom of the novel I'm developing right now. A line of dialogue. Are you confused yet? No? Then let me continue. A silly comment. None of the victims was seriously hurt. Yeah, they were all hurt in a very funny way. A character name. Farrah Sweel. A new phrase. Tongue pooch, when you screw up your lines. A notion. Theorem. Absolute corruption empowers absolutely. Corollary. There are no good people in positions of power. Well, I haven't worked these into the story yet, but I will, and it will be the richer for it. Well, the final item in our grab bag today is don't hold back. Unlike screenplays, there are no budget constraints in a book. You can write the entire solar system exploded, planet at a time, as easily as you can write a leaf fell from the tree. So, let your imagination run wild. You can say anything, do anything, break any law, any taboo, any rule of physics. Your audience will follow you anywhere as long as you keep their interest. So. Follow the muse wherever it leads. No idea is too big or too small. Write about the things you're most passionate about, and it will come through your words between the lines and right into the hearts and souls of your readers. I'm Melanie Ann Phillips, and I hope you visit us at storymind.com. Till next time.